Hey, yeah, welcome back to Career Build Series, episode 131. So we're going to do a little bit of building in this video. A um, little bit of uh, work, a little bit of editing, uh, whatever you want to call it here. I'm going to take out the loco. I'm going to do a couple tests here. I want to test trying to get my train up and running properly. So I would like more speed. Uh, if I can get 60 miles an hour um, with some cars, that would be good. Um, I also want to... Cut down the wheel slip. That's a big issue for me right now. Um, cutting down that wheel slip. So I'm going to start my uh, steam piston generator up. Presently, I'll kind of show you the drive system. It's it's uh, it's electric uh, with the steam generation. And so we have steam generator. We have electric drive here. I've, you see I actually have a ton of electric motors in the back here. And we have a couple of gearboxes. I've, I've kind of got some conflicting info from different people about um, what is the best way to reduce wheel slip to get some speed. And so what I'm going to do is I want it to be steam electric. Um, that's kind of just, you know, that's the way I want it. Uh, I want it to operate that way. I also, um, that's kind of the desire for it, you know. And so let's, uh, this, as you can see, is insanity. Um, let's see the weight. This weighs uh, 106,000 mass. So, um, the whole point of this car, it's a well car, just packed with weight blocks. That is to test a wheel slip because if, if it's going to slip, it's going to slip with this. And so this is presently, so, uh, we're going to use our baseline, um, car as our test. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to crank up to, I want to set to, let's say, 20 miles an hour because I doubt it, try, it ever gets to 20 miles an hour and we'll see how the wheel slip so some people were, were actually saying the more weight the better and I think I chalk this full of uh, yeah I think the, see this is full of weight blocks in there there we go there's wheel slip there All right, so we're getting wheel slip. I'm um, getting up to about six, eight. It seems like the weight is really helping a little bit, um, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and zero this out. And I'm just gonna grab the uh, the loco. All right, so that is. Let me look at my gearing and how I have my gearing set up. So I essentially have two gearboxes here. One going forwards and one going rearwards and this essentially just adds all this together so currently they're set to uh, 95 facing towards the engine so this uh, or facing away from the engine so this should be giving me more torque so let's do this let's uh, turn this around and this will be the opposite. This will give me more RPS. So I've heard both ways. I've heard you need more torque. I've heard you need less torque. I've heard the electric motors are too torquey. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep the same setup uh, essentially. And I'm going to, because um, that gave me the same, the right speed that I wanted. And all I'm going to do is by flipping them around, I'm going to trade from giving me more torque, which is currently the way they were, to giving me more RPS. And so... I can spawn this and I can actually push with the train car so it doesn't really matter which direction I go. Of course, you know, scientifically I should be doing this the same. Which actually, you know what, I, I will do it the same. Just because I don't want to, I don't want to screw up my results. I want my results to be pretty uh, accurate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, I'll uh, recall that um, weight car and I'll just rehook. So that will actually just take me a second here and then um, yeah, see, it just take me a second. So by, you know, scientifically, you shouldn't be changing more than one variable at a time. That it makes it hard to know what you're doing. So, okay, so we're connected. Let's go back up to 20. Again, I want to keep the numbers the same. I want that will, the P value will go up at a, at the same type of rate to try to get us there. So we're actually, it looks like we're doing better. Looks like we're doing much better. So it seems like the slip is a function of over torquing the wheels, which makes sense. If you think about a wheel letting go, 
if you have too much torque, the wheel wants to, um, you have a coefficient of friction between the, in this case, a steel wheel and a steel rail. And so if the torque is too high, the, uh, it allows you to get past that coefficient of friction where you're no longer causing friction. Once you're spinning, you're going to stay spinning. And so let's see, we're doing... Okay, I have to stop here. I have to wait for my electricity to build up. My electric's dying. That's me trying to stop. Let me get make sure I'm building up electricity here. Um, elect you see the electricity going up. I need to, again, I screwed up by changing a variable. Uh, it looked like that works, but I need to get this up to 100% electrical generation. Okay, we're at 100% uh, because you end up losing your, uh, you know, you end up losing power. So let's set this to 20. Okay, so that is giving me slip right off the bat. Let's see if we can get better performance, though. Let's see if we can get past slip. Some initial slips, fine, like this. I want to see if I can get up to a higher speed, uh, utilizing greater RPS and less torque. So essentially, if I can, tr if I can reduce the torque on these uh, motors and increase the RPS to the wheels, we'll see if I can get a higher speed. Now it looks like I'm getting the same. I was doing around eight or nine miles an hour, torqued out the same way. Now some people are saying the electric motors are the problem. Kind of look at some of the comments here. You know, what I might probably do is I might bring in somebody else's loco to see what, um, you know, see what a, a good loco uh, operates, how a good loco operates. Yeah, so the other way I could do this is I could set it to torque. Okay. Alright, so I'm not getting much of a change, and that's kind of a pain. Um, let's see. So, um, alright, let's do this. I'm not getting much of a change. Um, let's try another variable. Let's keep it on the RPS side uh, because my save still has them facing the other way. So right now we're facing towards the uh, motors. Let's go to three ones. Let's increase the RPS, essentially decreasing the torque even more. And let's spawn that in. And let's test this out. Let's get to 100% electrical generation before I uh, start testing. You know what I'll do? Uh, I'm going to turn on infinite electricity. I don't know if that's... I don't know exactly if it works properly that way. Um, because, you know, I have a... I'm keeping my batteries. I actually have one battery, one medium battery running this whole train. Um, if your electrical generation is stable enough, you don't need a lot of batteries. So. All right, so that's there. Um, let's let this build up. I was going to turn on infinite electricity, but I don't want to get any bad results. See, this one medium battery is all that runs this train. Um, I don't want to get any errant results where sometimes you turn on infinite fuel, you get errant results. You turn on infinite electricity, you'll get errant results where it's essentially producing more electricity than you're really able to produce uh, generating it, which um, I keep a 100% battery the whole time with this generation system, but I, wanna, I don't want to put in any uh, errors into my methodology. Let me know in the comments, too, if you like this sort of uh, going into the weeds type of gameplay. Um, you know, it can be kind of monotonous, but it um, can also be interesting. So let's see if I can get some info. Um, I won't take too long at this. What I'll probably end up doing is going into... Um, I kind of want to build a tanker car so that we can... Um, because the, we can make... What was it? Two dollars and nine cents per liter, bringing oil up to the uh, Arctic. 
So that's kind of what I want to do. Let's let this get up to about 1,400 um, generations. What we're what's our generally around where we're uh, stable there. Okay, um, and then let's back into the car. So all I did was I kept it on RPS. So the uh, gearbox is appointed for RPS, and I um, and I set it so that it would um, be at three to one. And so we're gonna set this to twenty again. Now all that's doing is it's the PID trying to achieve that number. So it's probably giving it more power than it needs. All right, still, we're doing about nine, nine miles an hour. So we're not really changing much. I told it I want 20. Let's go ahead and see, can I get higher? See, like, this is going to crank the p-value up, and it's going to try to give us a ton. Oh, electrical generation's way down. Is that not, that should be producing. Maybe I'm just spinning the motors up enough that, yeah, it's going back up. Okay, so it wants to stabilize, stabilize around eight or nine um, miles per hour, regardless. So that's kind of a, that, you know having a consistent number. So I've changed a couple of things. I went to RPS side. I went to torque side. I increased the RPS even more, and I'm getting the same speed. So um, something's up with that. So that's actually a good that's a good um, bit of information. So let's try something else. And then again, I don't want to harp on this too much. Um, this isn't always the most interesting of gameplay. Let me grab this. So this is my train controller, my drive system. And what I want to do here is p-value still there. Okay. Let's see, where's my p-value? P-value. Okay, p-value is plugged in, but I need to swap it out. So let's do this. Let's go in here, and then where is my P value? Okay, so right here. So I want to change that out for my manual P value. So I was using a 0.1. And now I'm going to update this, and I want to actually uh, modulate my P value. See if I can change the P value of the PID to give me better results. So that is a thought as well. So let's get this moved out. Let's call that back. And then we'll get some electrical generation up. Oh, I have to put in a p-value or it's going to do nothing. 0.1. So this is the p-value we were at. And my drive system needs some work. But you know, again, it's kind of my method is I get a train up and I get a vehicle up and running. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I refine it. I refine the looks of it. Um, you know, a lot of people go right in and they'll make something beautiful and then try to get it to work. And, um, you know, you have to make sacrifices with how it looks. You have to make sacrifices with how these things run. And so I like to get it up and running kind of how I want it to. And then once I do that, um, I can go back and design the looks and everything else. Um, you know, once I have a unit that works, a uh, vehicle that works, I can go back and I kind of design the looks of it. I can design uh, around that. Because, you know, if you make something beautiful and you really love it and then you realize, oh, I need to build a bigger microcontroller, I have no place for this, now I have to destroy the looks of it, you kind of, you miss the way it used to look and it uh, kind of bums you out where you get something functional and you say, okay, like you saw how ugly Katie did was in the, in the beginning. Katie did was functional. And once I had it functional, I said, okay, well, now I have a functional. I know how big my microcontrollers are. I know how much space I have. And I could actually go back and kind of re-sculpt it and make it look better and look the way I wanted to. And I had a vehicle that worked. And that was much better. Okay, so one thing I've suspected, which I'm not sure of, is that this p-value is too high. And so what it's doing is it's causing the, it's, it's essentially saying, hey, electric motors, go to 100%. And when it says, hey, electric motors, go to 100%, that causes too much torque, causes the wheels to slip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down by a tenth. Uh, I'm going to go one tenth of this, so it's going to be 0 0.01. So that's, uh, instead of 0.1, it's 0 0.01. So let's try this now, and let's see if I can get better results. So we're going to go scream it right up to 20. And so hopefully it should make changes much more slowly. So we still have slippage. 
and we're, we actually gain we're gaining speed look at that so it, it, that was one of the things I suspected was we had a p-value that was too high and it looks like I was right we're at one-tenth the p-value and if you look so essentially what it's saying is hey electric motors just add a little tiny bit of power and so if you think about it imagine if you got in a car with a lot of torque and you slammed on the accelerator and the wheels slip right well now you're going nowhere now you go in your car and you act like a normal person you just give it a little bit of accelerator well now you're off to the races. you're actually moving faster because you're not slipping and we're getting that result right now went from getting nine to uh... for eight to nine we're up to thirteen alright so let's start increasing this we're gonna get slip but that's okay we have an auto slip reduction system in here so let's go to forty let's see if it behaves itself so what it should do is it should automatically reduce the P should automatically reduce the thrust and it will automatically add it back in until it gets rid of this slip so see now it's kind of it's kind of got rid of the slip it's gonna add it a little bit at a time see if I can get up well we're up around 13 miles an hour so we were doing better um, with this lower P value now I'm gonna leave it at 40 and I'm going to keep playing with this p-value. So I'm waiting for it to get back up around 13, see if it goes over 13. You know, we could reach a critical um, speed where any higher torque or any more power is going to actually slip the wheels and we can't do anything about it. So you see we're coming up around 12, 13 now. And so by raising the number to 40, the reason I did that is when you have a very low p-value, essentially what it's going to do is you have to go way over the number to get it to move up. And so we're kind of tricking the system because the p-value is actually too low. So, you know, that's I'm no expert in this. That's just kind of my, you know, my experience with it. All right, so we're hanging around 12 there. Getting a little slip now and again. Alright, so we're slip limited here. Let's do this. Let's go to half of that. So that would be point, uh, zero, zero, 0.005 is half of um, point zero 0.01. And so what essentially what I'm trying to do is have the P value um, or the PID send, tell the motors to ramp up very, very slowly. And as they ramp up very slowly, hopefully we never hit critical torque. Now, the other thing is if I can figure out what critical torque is, essentially at what torque do we break the wheels loose, I can hopefully maybe, maybe actually switch to a torque system where I change the uh, power application based on torque. This is also kind of a tough, tough testing area. I probably should have tested this out of Komodo. We have a curve here, and this curve is kind of a pain. Um, but it did work. By changing the p-value, we went from getting about uh, 8 to 9 up to about 13. So, But again, we could reach critical torque where we're just going to break the wheels loose regardless of what we do. See, once we hit that, we're pretty much breaking the wheels loose regardless. So I think we have a critical torque we have to worry about. So I'm going to go even, I'm going to go half, I'll go a tenth of that. So was that zero, zero, what do we have, was it five? Lots of zero. So I'm going to, this should be adding power very, very slowly. And as you can see, that's too slow. That's just not doing anything. So we let's do point zero 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 one. That appears to be too slow. Okay, so let's let's figure out what our torque issue is here. So we have a torque issue. Um, I think we're reaching a critical torque. So essentially, you know, you have a coefficient of friction where the steel wheel on a steel rail with the mass pushing down on it, at some point that wheel will the friction will not be enough to uh, counteract the torque of the wheel and you'll get slippage and so that appears to be what's going on 
And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I don't know why I started this up. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's actually, I don't want to change two things at once. Changing two things at once is always a problem. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to do a just a T-pipe here. Okay. All right, I'm just going to read it off one wheel, and then I'm going to take a torque meter. Uh, hit Q would be helpful. I'm going to take a torque uh, meter here. And I'm going to read this torque to, uh, I don't know what I'm reading off this dial, but I'm not using it right now. So that's going to my uh, torque gauge there. And I don't need to plug that in. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for critical torque. So I'm essentially going to start where I started before. And we're going to go ahead and uh, see if I can achieve critical torque. And there's that sitting there. All right, so essentially uh, what I want to find out is, is there a torque value that when I reach that torque value, the wheel um, gives, gives way, essentially. Now, somebody had suggested it, but I don't want to do it for RP reasons, is to add more trucks, essentially more of these um, wheel units. I don't really want to do that. Um, you know, for RP reasons, I kind of want to do that. I'd rather add a second locomotive and just kind of, you know, I again, I don't need to go make 10 million every trip up there. Um, I don't mind bringing a small number of cars. You know, it's uh, it's not a big deal to me. All right, let's let the electricity build. Let's grab our vehicle back here. So I like the system. It makes it easy to go grab these and put, put them forward and backwards. Um, and I'm going to quickly wait for max power generation, and then we'll do this test. And then uh, get a little data on this. I'll, I think I'll uh, we'll kind of put this away for now. I'll start working on the... Um, the, you know the tank either the tanker car for the train or the truck or both we'll see how we go time wise um, I'm just waiting for this to kick on here and get moving um, again I'm trying to keep all the variables the same if I if you can keep all the variables the same you know if you have a change it's something you did if you change three things at once and you get a, either a good result or a bad result, you don't know what caused it. And so that's problematic. And so it's better to uh, kind of wait it out, to do one at a time and say, okay, I changed this one thing, it made it worse. Okay, so I, I want to either change it the opposite direction or just don't do that. And then, up, oh, you get a good result and you say, okay, what I did gave me a good result. I want to do more of that, you know. So right now we have torque. So we're reading 252. Okay, let's go to 20. And I want to see if I can reach critical torque. And I know when the wheels stop slipping, essentially. So it looks like... See, this is a problem, is we get static torque in the game, as you can see. So I'm curious. I'm going to try one more thing. So it looks like 252 is when we're breaking free here. That's not changing. That's kind of annoying. I could check RPS, see if we have critical RPS, which I should, you know what I'll do here. All right, we're back to 9, again, because I'm using that higher P value, right? So we have 252. That's our torque. Let's check, see if we have a critical RPS. Okay, so see our RPS? When our RPS hits 5, 5, 5, 6, that's when it's spinning. So I wonder if I can maintain. See, the problem is I need to eventually move the wheels at a higher RPS. So I wonder if there's a critical RPS. So let's go down. Let's here. Let's go to point zero five. Let's go half of that. All right, let's go to uh, 0 0.025. That's half of that. Let's go to 0 0.01. That's a tenth of our initial number, and that gives us a better speed. Okay, now we're back up to 13. All right, so we had that was our best number for getting our best speed. Now let's look at our values. 252 stay in stationary. Look. We're at 4 RPS, 
we're not breaking the wheels loose. So I wonder if we can put an RPS limiter on there. So I wonder if we have a critical RPS. Notice we don't have any slippage. Let's see if I can go up a little bit. All right, so we are hitting, we're squealing again. Let's check our RPS. Okay, so as soon as we hit about four, eight, four, nine, we're slipping. So we might have a critical RPS where once we hit that RPS, because the torque seems stable. So I wonder, it's a couple things. Can I knock this torque down? If I can get the torque low enough, hopefully that should allow me to increase the RPS. Um, now, you know, again, I'm trying to figure out their system, how they have this operating. Um, so I would have to decrease... I'd have to decrease the torque, so I'd essentially have to run my torque down, which is currently what I'm doing. I'm uh, By having those gearboxes face away from the engine, I'm reducing my torque. So let's try something really quick. Let's grab this back. What I should have, uh, what I should have done is I should have... I still can do it. Run everything with um, run everything with infinite electricity on, and then then I don't have to wait as long. Let me uh, let me go ahead and try something. All right, so let's try this. Um, I need to get the torque down. So I'm gonna start doing infinite electricity too. I want to get a more consistent result. Um, so, essentially if we face this towards the uh, engine, we're going to get um, facing the arrows towards the engine reduces uh, torque, increases RPS. And so let's see if I can't get this torque down. Electric motor is a little bit wonky with the way they work. Um, so I'm going to add two in here, and then I'm going to add two in the back. I just have my setup kind of symmetrical. And then let's find find where this one is here. Um, should just be able to add two more right here, right before. Yep, there is. Oh, this one's facing the wrong way now. Huh, did I screw up here? Nope, that's right. Okay, that's correct. All right. Um, I had them facing the right way. They just should be facing opposite directions. Um, let's see. So they should be facing towards the motor. It increases the RPS, decreases the torque. Threes, threes, threes. All right, let's spawn it and see what... Uh, we should get a static torque number off this torque meter. Okay, so see, we went from 252 down to 43. All right, let's go ahead and let's move this forwards. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to infinite electricity. That's just going to give me quicker turnaround time, so I'm not having to start this up. Uh, this needs to be 0 0.1. All right, so we that's given us a static uh, torque of 43. So... Uh, by static, I just mean it's not changing. That wheel squeal is uh, the brakes applying. And the motors actually help by putting it in reverse. So um, essentially what I'm doing is I'm cutting down my torque. And hopefully, um, if I can reduce the torque, that allows me to increase the RPS without the wheels breaking free. And RPS is going to be, you know, think about a wheel as a, as a, as a line you know, connected at the ends, right? That's all a, a wheel is, right? It's a, it's a line connected to the end. So if you said the the line is a meter and you you make the two ends attached, well, now you have a wheel. And so for every one rotation per second, that's one meter per second. All right, and so let's say the wheel had a diameter of 10. That's 10 meters per second for every one rotation. So that uh, turns, that gives us our speed. So let's go up to 20 again. Might get a bunch of wheel squeal, but let's see if the decrease in torque uh, can get better speed. So we might get some off the bat, but I'm hoping to see if we can get more speed. And it actually looks at the moment like we're getting less speed. 
So we might have a critical RPS where um, once we hit a certain RPS, it's wheeling the wheels. See, it's it's doing it around five again. So I wonder if the, if the wheels can just take five, and that's all they can take, and then they uh, start squealing out. So we're at right around nine. Let's try the tenth thing again, 0 0.01. So essentially all that's doing is it's adding in very slowly. So this will essentially, it will... Uh, take us longer to get up to speed, which I don't really care about. I just don't want to sp spin the wheels out. That's our highest speed yet. 14. Let's look at our numbers. Alright, so see we're not getting to 5 RPS on the um, on there. But we have a higher speed. So 14 is the highest speed we've reached. Let's go up to 40. And so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna work on this all day here. Um, see if we can slowly speed up here. I'm not gonna work on this all day, but I want to just kind of I wanted to play with this. I want to get some information. I want to see. Numbers wise, what I can do to hopefully increase the uh, abilities of my train. And so I'll, I'll research on my own a little bit of other people's stuff, but I figured you might be interested in some of this testing. And so, kind of get some of this testing on board. So, let's look at our numbers again. So, it looks like by decreasing torque. So see, right around 5, 5 RPS is when it lets the wheels loose, essentially. So it's, it's, it's almost like I can get a higher speed if I decrease my torque, and then it's taking me longer to get the wheels up to 5 RPS, but it's weird. It's just, it's a funky system. Yeah, it's a really funky system. But all right, so let's, uh, let's kind of put a... Good info on that. Um, I'm not even going to save it. I just wanted the info. was all I really wanted here. Um, and I will do some independent research and come back to this. All right, so let's uh, build a tanker car. So I'm going to look up some diesel tankers. Um, let's look at some diesel train cars. And let's look at those. Let's do diesel tanker car. All right, so here are some tankers. Here are some diesel ones. Uh, I'm just kind of getting, getting some inspiration here for what to do. So I'll just kind of show you some pics and kind of show you what I'm going for here. So like, uh, here we go, where was it? So this is a diesel, this is a DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. So this is actually a DEF tank. Uh, this is, that's diesel fuel. That looks like an old school one. Um, what is that? That looks like... So just kind of looking at tanker cars. Um, so it looks like it has a flat base and then the car, the round tank on top. These are using the tank as the stress member. So maybe that. I think that would be kind of interesting. Using the tank itself as a stress member. Um, yeah, like that's doing that. All right, um, let me see if I can get, uh, we'll do dimensions. So here's a picture. Okay, so this one here has some, um, uh, that's not a very high definition picture. I'm trying to get one where I can actually read the numbers. Trying to get one that's not a thousand years old. That's kind of one of the things with, um, with a lot of the train technology is just, you know, you, it, trains have been around so long that you end up getting pictures that are you know, very old. Um, let me get out of images here. Usually, actually, images are the best. Um, 
here's dimensions here. Um, you know, the density of, you know, if you're carrying, say, boxes in the, um, in the back of a, of a square car, you know, they're not probably all that heavy, but you're carrying a liquid that's very heavy, so you don't want them super, super large. Um, trying to decide how big to make this. So I wonder, let's see if I can get two cars in the base. So got a little bit of inspiration here. Let's start building. So um, okay. So I'll start putting putting this. Up. I was clicking on OBS. Um, all right, let's go ahead and start putting this in. Um, I kind of want to. Uh, let's see. Try to decide how best to do. And so I need space for the coupler. Maybe there. Um, I think that's the height of where my coupler's been. Um, just trying to see. I want enough to account for enough space for the coupler that I can fit this in. Okay, and then I want to copy this one here. We'll sp uh, and how many blocks do I have for that? Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. All right, let's paste that there. All right, let's go. Nine there, okay. And let's grab this again here. Cut this and we'll move this all the way to the back extreme, which it was. Okay, and then I wanna go one this way. I don't think it doesn't matter the wheel direction just because we're, uh, you know, these aren't gonna be powered. These are gonna be unpowered, so. And I need to kind of get these. Let me do this before I screw it up. Uh, let me measure the distance between the two of them. Please be an odd number. Okay, 77. So uh, it's at 35 and 3, 38. So 39 is our center point. 39 right there is our center point. Okay, so 39 is our center point. Let's go ahead and we'll grab this here. If that's our center point, and I want one space, so there, paste that. And then I want one space. So let me measure, just measure this here. That's going to be 28. So I will measure 28 off of here. 28, and then there we go. All right, so I'm just kind of building two cars in one spot. Hopefully it makes that a little bit easier. I'm not going to keep the second car. I'm not building two at once. But what I'm going to do is that just allows me to, I want to make them so that I can have two cars go in one. When I, when I launch it, have two cars there, essentially. OK, so there we go. And so that's, we're kind of in business now. Um, So start to build, uh, let's turn on symmetry here. Start to kind of build the shape of, the general shape of this. This tanker. So I want it wider than that. All right. 
so let's just put this here. Okay, and so just kind of setting up how I want this to look here. set a wedge in here one by two I kind of want to smooth this angle out a little bit can't really make round stuff in games so see that's too sharp so what I think I'll do is I'll put a block there and I do a 45 that will smooth it out like so that's better and then I'll go ahead and I'll do a one by four wedge just kind of working the angle here and then I can go ahead and drag and get that kind of set up. So that's kind of setting up the tanker there. Let's go ahead and go three tall there. And then let's start working it back in. So after the three tall section I want a 45. No, after the three tall section I want a, a one by four. And I'm getting close to hitting the roof so we need to start finishing this up here. Okay, there, and then let's go ahead and go into a one by four. All right, and let's go ahead and put this in, and then that kind of give me my general tank shape here. All right, I'm interested in what my volume is going to be. So that's a general tank shape. I'm kind of happy with that. Let's go ahead and start expanding this out. And so let's just go right to, I need to build the ends. So let's go to where um, that is. Oh, it's doing all sorts of stuff I don't want it to do. Okay, right there is right at the, where the axles connect. And then this here can be deleted. I want to kind of get a general shape. I want to see what my volume is going to be per tank. Just kind of get a little info off this. Making it with dark blocks is kind of hard to see sometimes. All right, so there is the, so right there, that's the kind of exterior of this. And then I want to try to do, let's think how to start getting these in, start working on pyramids here. Um, let's go. Yeah, this is going to be ugly, this angle here. Should have probably two buys is going to have to be done just to get this angle. No, I can do it like this. I can do it like that. Yeah, I can do it all right like this. Okay, and then I want to grab this. There we go, and that's working. All right, and then two by wedges. I think it's two by wedges, right? Yeah, two by wedges. All right, so I just kind of want to get this enclosed, and um, yeah, I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna start with the top. See, this angle here is gonna screw me up right here. Finishing this angle is always tough. Um, Yeah, this is this is always, it's always tough. I've tried to do this before, where you finish up a um, yeah, you can kind of see how that wants to misbehave there. Let me see if I can grab a a four by. I 
think I might be able to do it with a 4 by pyramid. I can't remember. I've had these issues before where they just don't want to line up very nicely. That's yeah, not terrible. I could put a... That's actually not bad. Um, yeah, that's looking all right. Go that there, and then I could go one deeper here. Uh, maybe I will. So. Yeah, I think I will. That will be better. I'll kind of round it a little bit more. Um, just trying to kind of go to the halfway point here, and then grab a one by two wedge here. And that'll do a lot of pasting here and uh, yeah so this works okay so this is kind of looking how I want it to look and grab these yeah the black blocks are kind of tough to see you just I'll do a color swap on them here just to make them easier to see there you go Make it a little bit easier and less stressful on the eyes to see it. Kind of squinting to try to see it. All right. All right, so that is the shape of the container. And so what I'm going to do here is I will grab from here to there and up, up until here. And we'll copy that. Didn't need to grab all that, so let's grab from here. Copy that. And that will go there. And then we will go ahead and I will grab all of this. And that starts there, yep. And then this tank will go there. And then if I want to make the tank a little less fat, I can cut out a block and drop it down. But you know, I kind of I still want to maybe stretch it some. We'll see. All right, so that is there. And then let's go ahead and put a spawner. Actually, I don't need a spawner. Let's put a meter in here. Just go a fluid meter, and I'm going to put it right. I'm going to color it pink, and put it right, um, right here. And you'll see why in a second. So I'll put it in the enclosed volume. I'll spawn it. And now I can reach up there. And it that holds 87,000. So 87375. So 87375 times 2.09 is... Okay. So this one container will make us 182,613 to take up to the Arctic. This one. All right. So that's kind of what I want, because I want to be able to take this and, um, you know, I want to take two of these at most. Um, I'm curious what this is going to weigh full of liquid. Um, but that's not bad. It's a little bit on the big side. I probably want to shrink it a little bit. Um, and maybe break out some of these this angle and smooth a little bit. So that's good. Let me save this as um, uh, tanker tanker car one. All right, and let's say if this is tanker car two. And let's see if I like cutting these angles a little bit. Eh, it's built. I don't want to screw with it too much, really. Um, these one by fours are a little bit flat for me. The volume is is pretty damn high, so that's not bad. It it doesn't look ridiculous. You know, I'm mostly in the proof of concept phase here, kind of looking at it and seeing what. But that's a lot. That's a lot of that's a big money, eighty-seven thousand. So just kind of look at our map really quick. I want to kind of see what some shorter trips would be. Um. It mostly it would be main island stuff really. Trying to see what some other diesel stuff is here. Uh dollar seventeen. 
dollar twenty. See, that's all road stuff. There's no um, train there. Gotta see what I can. Dollar seventeen. Yeah, see, it's not viable because that's a dollar seventeen. That's a dollar set. That's not bad. Dollar seventeen. So mm -hmm. trying to move and it's, it's inhibiting my movements. Um. So theoretically, I could buy diesel for here. For a dollar seventeen. What's this one here? Yeah, I could buy dollar seventeen and sell for a dollar seventy-two. Let's look at that. Dollar, dollar seventeen. Uh, I'm already screwing it up. Dollar seventy-two minus a dollar seventeen. That's fifty-five cents per liter. And we're at what eighty-seven thousand times eighty-seven. Thousand, that's forty-five thousand. That's a good, uh, so that's not a bad trip. So what I would do is I would uh, tanker with the truck, bring it up to here, fill the car, and then bring the train from there to there. Now that's a, not a ton of money for a bit of work, but the ultimate is to buy the diesel here, or I could buy it here. This is cheaper, but it's a longer trip. So um, this right here is super duper piece of cake because I buy here and my train's right here. So I would go up, buy, I'd probably come around here, buy, come down, fill. Buy, fill, buy, fill, buy, fill. It's a circle route right there. And that's a dollar ninety-two. No, I don't want to fast travel. Leave me alone. Um, this is a dollar seventeen, so that's eighty cents per liter more I'm making. So this could be huge money here. Um, let me look it up. And the p the plan would be is this is up at BBG where the containers go. So that's $4. So you're selling diesel at BBG at the same time you're emptying containers. So I could take containers from Sawyer North and and tanker. So, so that's 4 minus... Um, so that so that extra profit that's an extra forty seven thousand in profit. So that's um, four dollars minus a dollar seventeen for diesel. There is two eighty three times eighty seven thousand. That's two hundred and forty six thousand per tank. So I'm probably going to want to shrink these tanks. Um, that's big money, and I'd rather take more tanks of a lower volume. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm thinking. So let me let me play with this really quick, and then we'll end the video there. I think I want to cut the angle down. So I think what I'll do is I'll work on the top, and um, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. I'll work on the top. So let's go to where is the flat section? I want to stay above the flat here, right there, and then I want to go like this, cut that. So, all right, now let's try let's try something a little bit less of a... I'm going to do a more progressive angle here, so it's not not as flat. It's a little bit rounder. And so we'll see how I can do this here. So do two by here. Like that. Yeah, so this is just going to cut the angles down a little bit. And then, let me see here. I'm going to do 2 by 4 here instead of a 4 by 4 Like so. This is just going to cut the angle down a little bit, make the tank less um, extreme on on how quickly it, it changes its um, geometry. And then I think I want to do a one by here. So we'll go that. And then this is where you get into problems. So I need to do a two by four here. Like so. And I'll grab this. Yeah, so let's see how this shapes up. I think I'm going to like this shape better. 
And I'm cool with the volume being cutting, cut down. We have an enormous amount of volume to take here. I don't really need to have this thing make me a quarter million every trip. You know, I'm not I'm not a big fan. Ooh, that's where we get into problems. But we can go into one by fours here um, to fix that problem. Like so, and flatten the roof out a little bit. That's better. That's nice, and that's giving me a good angle. I like that angle. That's giving me a little bit less of a crazy angle, I find. Yeah, it feels like it's less of an extreme angle here. This is kind of more gradual. I'm liking this better. And we'll see how much volume we lose by doing a little bit more gradual. You see that's kind of cutting the angle down a little bit, making the roofs a little bit flatter. You know, I could even go, even, I'm trying to think if, I, if there's a way I can go more. Um, I don't think there is because I'm already up to fours here. Um, let me see if I can make the, see the, the end is, this is screwing me up. So let me try doing the roof line the way I want it and then make the end fit the what I want. So let me try that. Kind of a building video here, a little bit of testing, a little bit of building. Not not always the most exciting stuff, but kind of some proof of concept, and you get to see where I'm kind of thinking of going in the uh, series. Um, I don't want to run right right again and make it try to go make a ton of money, but um, you know, when I do get the feeling to go back up to the Arctic, it would be cool to do a container mission and um, you know and bring a. Uh, do a container mission and bring a an oil tank up there. That's not going to work. Um, do I do one by four here or no? Is that ridiculous? I don't. I think that's not even going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work to do that. So this would have to be flat like this. Which do I hate that? That's not bad. It's a little more gradual. Um, it's not terrible. Um, let me see how. Let me see if I like the uh, old one by four better. There, I think I do actually. So that's probably. That's not bad. So let's grab the top here. Um, copy that. I think I prefer this to what I had here, which is kind of insanity. Um, I need to kind of get this down where it needs to be here. All right. Let's finish the end here. Uh, this end is all done. So. So this will hopefully allow me to make this tank a little bit smaller. Just the volume of it was insane. Like I want to put two of these at least in here. And so having that kind of volume is just nuts. Just It's just like, you know, again, I don't, I don't want to make it so that I do have to do one trip and I have every dollar I ever needed in life, you know, it's just a little excessive for me. All right, so that is there. And then... I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to fix the whole bottom in one swoop here. All right, so that's my new tank. I like it's a little bit fat, so maybe cut it in a block. That's the only uh Grievement I have is it's probably a little bit wide. Um, I do want an overhang, but I don't want it that wide. So let's do this. Um, trying to think how to cut it in a block. So you have to cut two blocks in to essentially make this work. So I let me see if I can do that. So go like this, 
And we'll go lengthwise. All the way, we'll go all the way up to the roof. Now we'll cut this, move it in one. Okay. And then I'll clear that, and then I want to grab this side, cut that, move it in one. All right, so that's a more natural shape, I think. That looks better, I think. That's a little bit sm it's smaller. It's not as ridiculous. Uh, it's a little bit rounder. I'm starting to like that a lot. Okay. And let's check the volume on this one. So 87,000 was the last one. 62. That's better. Okay, so made this a little bit smaller. Made this a little bit more uh, realistic, I, I would say. Um... I need to set up kind of platforms for this, um, so it kind of be so like I can cut out here. I think go there, and then f essentially just flatten all this out um, like this. And then this will be the platform section of it here where the this goes over the wheel trucks. I don't know if they're called trucks or what they're called. Like on an airplane, these sets of wheels are called trucks. Like that maybe. Yeah, that's kind of looking how I want it. Could do, you know, the symmetry mode where it goes forward back, but I'd rather just copy it, I think, because is easier just for me. All right. And where's that? That has three blocks left on there. Like that. All right, so that kind of sets that up for the platform of it. Um, I could also stretch it. I think I'm going to stretch it. Makes it longer than I probably like, but. Um, I think that's good there. Yeah. All right, so there we go. So that's kind of setting me up where I want to be. And I can kind of cut that out like that. Maybe put it on there. Three, three. I can set up the coupler at some point. But yeah, that's a better looking tank. Let's check the volume on this. The volume went back up again. 73. So yep, so I like this tank. This is a good tank. Um, you know, do some detailing on it, but Kind of gets me set up and going, and uh, I can start to work on that. Um, so this should hopefully be able to put two tankers in here. And with two tankers, we're talking 140,000 liters, talking in excess of 280,000 for a trip up to the Arctic. Uh, we can make some short trips uh, from north over here and sell it, and that uh, that will get us kind of where I want to go. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Um, so let's let's end it there. Um, that was a good video, kind of working on the train a little bit, um, working on a tanker car, kind of talking about what I want to do with the ability to, you know, the more things I have in my toolbox, the more toys that I have, things like tanker cars and tankers for trucks. Um, when I feel like going up to the Arctic to do a mission, all I have to do is load them in. Um, if I have to stop and build them, that takes a bunch of time. So I definitely want to have these things at my disposal so that I can quickly just go and do it. So uh, we'll end it there, and I will see you in the next one. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you like my content and want to uh, you know, know when I post, uh, please subscribe. We'll see you later.